the best revenge is to live a good life. <laughs> yeah. But deep down, you want to know that that person misses you and they're right. holding on to your scarf. Welcome to Dastardly Hamster. I'm here with my friend Mika, who has now liked two Taylor Swift songs which is awesome. Today we're doing All Too Well. When this record originally came out, this was not a single, or whoever was in charge did not think that this would be good enough for a single, so different songs were chosen, and this one sort of went on the back burner. But this was always a favorite song of the fans of Taylor Swift, to the point where about 10 years later, she decided, you know what, I'm going to re-record this, and I'm going to also make a 10-minute version of it. So we're not doing the 10-minute version today, but we are doing her re-recording of it, uh, the five-minute version. I feel like this is the song that every Taylor Swift fan likes, regardless of what era they started in. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm crossing my fingers uh, that you like it too. <laughs> it's also a song that tells a really good story, and it goes through... A bunch of stages of emotion all in the one song. Probably my favorite storytelling in any song ever. If you like this song today, I'll be three and then I get to show you a one-off. I'm excited to hear that it's going to bring me on a journey, that it's got a story to it as someone who normally listens to metal <laughs> and alternative. That's something that I, I really like when I can be brought on a journey and have a full story arc in uh, five minutes or less. <laughs> I'm still a little bit sniffly from listening to Marjorie, but I'll, oh. uh, I'll try to get past it. Take Take on whatever energy is going to be coming at me in this song. I walked through the door with you. The air was cold. Something about it felt like home somehow And I left my scarf there at your sister's house And you've still got it in your drawer even now Very, very country-ish start, especially with that acoustic guitar there. But I'm not put off by the lyrics. Uh, I know that some people have a bit of a gripe with how country sometimes doesn't have the best lyrics, but I kind of like Day in the Life songs. I'm okay with it. I do really like the deep drums and the, the bass that I'm hearing. Then I feel like it's about to go into a rise. And I might be okay, but I'm not fine at all. Cause there we are again on that little town street. You almost ran the red cause you were looking over at me. Wind in my hair, I was there. When would this have come out? Somewhere 2013-ish. The feeling I'm getting is a very Michelle Branch. Your cheeks were turning red. You used to be a little kid with glasses in a swim-sized bed. Your mother's telling stories about you on the t-ball team. You tell me about your past, thinking your future was me. And I know it's long.
so this part where it just becomes so country that throws me off i'm not saying it's bad mm. so this this is sort of the album where she makes a transition from country into pop a bit so she's like mm. not fully transitioned yet so there's still like some country elements mm. i don't really see this as a country song i don't i don't know it, do it doesn't sound like a country song to me but i could see it does have some country elements to it to me it sounds about as country as country can be but i also don't listen to a lot of country so okay <laughs> there we go I do really appreciate her voice projecting a lot more and I like the depth in it. It's very, very country, so I don't I don't love it, but mm. I appreciate the talent that goes into there. The only problem is that country twang, it's like it limits her. So as she's trying to belt out, the country twang is like it's blocking her nose and it's it's limiting what I think her range actually could be. It's interesting you say that because this version compared to her other version doesn't have the twang. Like her other version has a really strong twang and this one is sort of mm -hmm. missing. Um, but you could still hear it, I guess, but I don't. <laughs> Not in her accent, yeah. in her song, in her singing style. That country style, I think, is limiting how far she could actually belt. Because you're about to hit the part in the song where she does the biggest belt. Okay, <laughs> yeah. all right, I'm excited. Where she said well there, even though it was quieter, I felt like there was actually more depth in it compared to when she was trying to belt, but that country tone actually held her back. I actually do want to hear other songs where I don't know if she has any stuff that's more bluesy, but I'd like to see where her range can actually get to when she's not inhibited. I do like this rise in intensity that we're getting here. What do you rate this song? Not my favorite style of music, but I think it is objectively good. And so I'm going to give it a three out of five hamsters. Okay, I'll take that. 
I already said that this is my favorite Taylor Swift song. It's a lot of people's favorite Taylor Swift song. What she does so well here is telling the story of this relationship as it changes over time. It starts with her reminiscing. You know, I love the line, your mother's telling stories about you on the t-ball team. You told me about your past thinking your future was me. Or even before that, photo album on the counter, your cheeks were turning red, you used to be a little kid with glasses in a twin size bed. It's nostalgic at this point, right? But then as it continues going and the music starts picking up, she starts becoming a little bit more upset about it. And those happy memories are actually changing. And, and the music is actually changing too with her memories. The music is becoming louder. And then she's talking about maybe we got lost in translation. Maybe I asked for too much. Maybe this thing was a masterpiece till you tore it all up. And after everything that she says, she always ends it with, I remember it all too well. Best to repetition is the all too well. She's remembering it. She's remembering the good, remembering the bad. And now that she's remembered the bad, now... <laughs> It gets to a part where she's almost, I don't want to say vindictive because that's the wrong word, but now she's like sort of moving on and she's talking about like, I'm not sure that you were able to move on from me. There's a line there. You keep my old scar from that very first week. Yeah. So she ends basically saying, this is what you gave up. There we are again when I loved you so back before you lost one real thing you've ever known. So now <laughs> she's gone from her being nostalgic to her finding fault in the relationship to now her being like, this is what you've given up. So like her mood has changed like three times within this song. And I mm -hmm. feel like the music does a really good job at like reflecting those changes and her and her vocals too. Like there's one the part where she like starts belting it out. It's actually my favorite line in the song. You call me up again just to break me like a promise so casually cruel in the name of being honest. Love that line. <laughs> I give this a five out of five ham stars. I love this song so much. It's my favorite. I do really appreciate songs that can bring me on a journey, songs that mm. can give me a day in the life of someone. And uh, and there were a lot of things in here that are relatable. Most people have been through uh, similar breakups. You tell yourself that the best revenge is to live a good life. <laughs> yeah. But deep down, you want to know that that person misses you and they're right. holding on to your scarf. And that's uh, a good way to put it. Uh, yeah, exactly. You still you still want to know that you affected them in some way. That's it for us, hamstars. Spin your wheel down to that subscribe button. And give us a dastardly thumbs up.